So for this problem, we're just going to do a um, simple calculation of um, how hard we were, how hard Professor Puckett and I were uh, pushing the car. Um, to do that again, we just need to go back to some of our um, numbers that we had. If you remember, we had that um, it took us uh, around 11 seconds, and that the distance that we pushed it was um, was 19 meters. All right. Um, so the first thing I want to do is just draw a picture again of this, and I'm going to do go ahead and do a a free body diagram. Um, so before I do a free body diagram, let's just do a general picture. The, the the general picture, kind of the one we normally draw, would just be me here pushing, and you can include Professor Puckett in here too if you like, uh, and his arms, whatever. Okay, anyway. Um, uh, so that would be kind of the normal picture um, that we would do. Um, there'd be an initial one here, um, and then some final one later that was showing that it was moving, um, like so, right? Okay, so that's <laughs> that's kind of our normal picture. Um, but what we want to do instead is what's called a free body diagram. Free body diagram is basically ways of showing the forces that we're providing, um, and normally you try to include a, all the forces that are being um, that are that are uh, in a, acting on the um, on the thing that we're interested in. Uh, in this case, uh, we'll, we're only interested in one force, which so we're interested in the force that that Professor Puckett and I am, are providing. But let's go ahead and, and use this as an, as a chance to basically draw all of the forces that are on this car. Um, the first thing I want you to notice is that we are going to only draw a free body diagram for one thing at a time. So in this case, we're drawing it for just the car itself. That's a car, by the way. Yeah, I'll put wheels on it. Okay. Just for the car itself, okay? Um, I'm not going to do any forces on me. I'm not going to do any forces on anything else except for the car. Okay, so free body diagram, which we abbreviate FBD. So here's the car. Let's look at what kind of forces are on it. The first one that's always on any kind of object uh, that um, that is uh, that's um, that, that's on Earth is gravity. Okay, so there's always going to be a gravitational force, which I normally call FG. Um, there's also the obvious one that um, that we're doing, uh, which is that. We're providing some sort of pushing force on that side. All right. Again, I don't want to actually draw myself because we're just doing the free body diagram on the car. If you think about, well, what's the car? What what is what is the car feeling? The car is feeling a force to the left. All right. And then I'm just going to label FP for force push. Okay. There's also actually one final um, final force, if you think about it. There's, there's a final force which is actually just a little bit of friction that's pushing back on it. Um, there doesn't need to be. The, the, um, the, it would still be very hard to move a car even if there was no friction. You put it on ice, you, uh, you float the car, whatever you want to. The cars are still really heavy. They're, they're hard to push. The, the fact that it makes it hard to push is because it has a lot of mass, not just, not just necessarily friction. But in, in our case, there is, you know, we live on the earth, there's a small amount of friction that's pointing back. Um, I'm going to draw that really small. And I'm going to put in parentheses because it turns out we're, going, we're, we're not going to pay attention to that in this one. We're going to assume the friction is pretty small in this case. Okay, so that's our free body diagram. I want to point out that if we ignore this friction, let me go ahead and just go ahead and, and cross that out for right now in red. Just so we remember that we're not we're not paying attention. To it. If you notice, there's only one force going in the um, in the left direction. Uh, and so in the x direction, there's only one force going in the y direction. This should point out to us that we may have done something wrong because we know that for each direction, okay, this is this is kind of our new physics, Newton's first law. Newton's first law tells us that in any direction that we're interested in, let's just start with x. The force is equal to m a in that direction, where a is the acceleration. Now, of course, that's how we get the car to move. Um, we're providing a force in the x direction, and 
it has some mass and then it moves, uh, it accelerates in the x direction. Now if you look at the y direction, we also have the same equation. It wasn't accelerating in the y direction, it stayed constant in the y direction. I've actually missed one of my forces. And if you figure it out, you have the forces, what's called the normal force on the tires. Alright, let me um, uh, let me reposition where I put that. I'll put that up there. So the normal force on the tires. It turns out in the y direction that normal force balances out with that gravity force, and that's why we don't have any acceleration in that direction. So what we're really interested in is this FP over here. This FP is what's going to tell us is, is how hard Professor Puckett and I are pushing. The nice thing is, again, we have this equation which says that the fx, and it's important to note that this fx is the sum of fx, that, that little symbol means the sum, but that means that we have to add up all the forces in the x direction. Okay, so we're going to have all the forces in the x direction, um, and that will give us the acceleration in the x direction, and all the forces in the y direction will give us the, the y acceleration. Luckily for this simple problem, we only have one force in the x direction, which is the pushing force. Okay. Um, we're actually going to put a negative on that because it actually is going in the negative x direction using our normal coordinates. Okay. And again, that's going to be equal to the mass times the acceleration in the x direction. So if we want to know the force, we just need to take the mass of the car times the acceleration in the x direction. Now, let's try to find both of those. The first one, the mass, we're just going to have to estimate. Um, it's a good sized car. Uh, um, I don't know. Um, let's just, uh, for convenience sake, call it uh, one metric ton or, or a thousand kilograms. Um, that's, that's probably not a terrible estimate. Um, I'll have to ask Professor Puckett sometime later uh, what the actual uh, mass of his car is. Um, but let's go ahead and just use 1,000 kilograms for now because it's a good estimate. To get the acceleration in the x direction, remember if we, if you remember back at our, um, our some of our previous slides, uh, we can find the acceleration from uh, the amount of distance that the uh, something travels uh, and um, and. Ha uh, the amount of time it takes to do that. Um, and uh, the, the first one that just comes to mind for me is x uh, minus x0 is equal to um, uh, is equal to uh, v naught t plus one half a t squared. That's just the one that comes most readily to mind. Um, our initial velocity was zero, of course. We started from rest. So this just says that the distance traveled all right, it's just equal to one half a t squared. Um, if I go ahead and solve for a, I'm going to multiply by two, so I get two times x minus x zero, and then we divide it by t squared. Um, or if we put, plug in our numbers, we get two times. Uh, the x minus x zero is just our d, that's just the distance that we traveled. Um, so we just get 19 meters. And then we get t squared, which was 11 squared. Um, unfortunately, I don't have a calculator right here, so let's just go ahead and do this by hand. Um, this is going to be 38. This is going to be um, 121. Okay, so our acceleration, that looks like if we multiply that by 3, that's almost 3 exactly, so it's approximately equal to 3 meters per second squared. Um, should have put my seconds there, and then we get meters per second squared. And then we get our meters per second squared. So we get about 3 meters per second squared as our acceleration. We'll plug that back into the force, and we get that the force that we were able to provide is equal to a thousand kilograms times three meters per second squared. This gives us three. Uh, I got my room here. Three thousand k 
kilogram meter per second squared or 3,000 newtons. All right, so um, that's about uh, what we got. Um, that's a pretty good force. It's about uh, equal to um, probably uh, a, 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 it's, it's about um, equal to our weight. So Professor Puckett and Ryan's weight. That means that we were pushing about as hard as it would take to basically lift ourselves up. And that seems approximately right. Um, again, uh, maybe we could try that again with some different numbers and get something slightly different. But I think you get the point, uh, which is that, um, which is that, this is how we basically calculate our force um, from a uh, uh, from a free body from going from a simple setup using our free body diagram. Uh, finding some simple uh, relationships and then solving it in the end.